episode. You know what I'm saying? We sipping on a little bit of scissor. Yep. I got oh, now, yeah, now listen, now, now listen real quick. You see what I got right here, y'all? Yeah. I don't even know who to call Mr. 106 in Park because yeah. these guys have been doing it for so long. I'm doing that. I had to stay in Toronto for five months. I was away from my family, but I got used to it. You know, I'm just got she's a great person to work with. Carrots on my earlobes, check. BBS is on my wrist. 20 carrots on my neck. The turn of a new century brought a huge success for No Limit. The record label with big names like Snoop Dogg, Silk the Shaka, Master P released about five albums in 2000 alone. The albums were titled Goodfellas, Brick Living, Trapped in Crime, Ghetto Postage, and The Last Meal, adding to the list of long commercially successful albums released by the label. And by around 2001, they added Lil Romeo, son of labor owner and rapper Master P to their ranks. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Lil Romy was born around 1989 in New Orleans. Being born into a family that predominantly makes music, Lil Romeo began rapping at the tender age of four. When he started making appearances on records with his father, he went on to be signed to the record label around 11 years of age and dropped his debut album shortly afterwards. They call me Little P, I represent the CP3. Callie, you heard me straight from New Orleans. Despite being the son of a booming music and business mogul, as well as attaining money and fame at an early age, Little Romeo seemingly faded off the map despite the great potential he showed as a kid when he broke Michael Jackson's record of being the youngest artist to top the Billboard charts. So the question is, what really happened to Little Romeo? Around 2001, Little Romeo released his debut single titled My Baby. The single was one of the 18 tracks on his self titled album Little Romeo. The album made its way to number 6 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 200,000 copies in the first week, eventually achieving gold status. Now, the album was pretty good for a kid's album, and that's probably because Little Romeo had writers. Some of the standout tracks for me were Where They At, That's Cool, Little Star, and My Baby. Well, the EP and music. A lot of hard work, and I'm just showing that all the kids out there in hip hop that we can't make it and follow our dreams and be the best that we want to be. Overall, the album generally received a mixed reception, with some people praising it as great pop rap production. In contrast, others felt like it was lackluster, underdeveloped, and repetitive. He quickly released the album the next year, but under a new look, New No Limit Records, which was now in partnership with Universal Music Group. The body of work titled Game Time had 19 tracks on it. It peaked at number 33 on the Billboard 200 and couldn't replicate the success of his previous album. The album produced hit tracks like Two Way as well as another song called True Love. Now if you were a Little Romeo fan back then, you were probably impressed by this album because it has no cussing, meaning anyone can listen to it. It's kinda similar to the first project, meaning Master P was heavily involved on it and Little Romeo still is true to the things he spoke about on his first album. Now in my opinion, the only problem with this project is it sounds like a bunch of remakes. The song We Can Make It Right sounds like Hard Knock Life by Jay-Z. But more corny. The song Girlfriend and Boyfriend sounds like another song called Friends by Houdini. We use it in the wrong way. Now you can look the word up again and again. The album simply lacked originality, and that's probably one of the reasons why it didn't do as well as its predecessor. Now, around the same time his album dropped, Little Romeo began acting and starred in his own TV show called Romeo. Thank you. I'm Romeo Miller, and we are pieces of the puzzle. And after that, he featured in more shows and movies, but more on that later. Now being every teenage girl's crush in the 2000s wasn't going to go unnoticed by other artists. In fact, another similar rapper had an issue with Little Romeo, and he goes by the name 
Bow Wow. Now you could say that Bow Wow was the archetype for kid rappers. Bow Wow was the first kid rapper to ever make it big. So it's safe to say that he could have been the inspiration for Little Romeo. Something Little Romeo himself would agree to later on in his career. Now because Little Romeo and Bow Wow was so similar, there was bound to be beef between the pair. Bow Wow took the first shot on Fresh As A Miz. On the song Bow Wow takes shots at Master P saying, I'm 18, making more than your dad. See? And in response, Little Romeo fired back on a track called You Can't Shine Like Me. Now, I actually only figured out years later that Fresh as a Miz was a shot at Little Romeo and Master P, but that's mainly because the song is very subliminal and doesn't mention any names. Now, there's more to the Bow Wow and Little Romeo story than meets the eye. According to the rumors, Master P confronted Bow Wow at the Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Awards show around 2006. Allegedly, when Master P confronted Bow Wow, Bow ran into his trailer and refused to talk about the tensions between him and Little Romeo. Now, when Bow Wow heard about how this incident was portrayed, he said the following, I can't understand all of this, but I guess that's how it is when you ain't getting no attention. You can hear me on the radio all day every day. You can't sell no records and your daddy is on Dancing with the Stars. If Romeo wanna make some real money, come sign with me. Then he wouldn't have to pull these stunts cause there ain't no limit over there. Now according to Master P, when he approached Bow Wow at the Nickelodeon Awards, they had a very civil conversation, one that didn't play out like the rumors suggested. And after nearly two decades, Little Romeo revealed that there wasn't really any beef between himself and Little Bow Wow. Huh? Well, it turns out that the entire beef was orchestrated by their labels in order to keep both artists in the limelight. Now let's go back to 2004. During this year, he released his third album titled Romeo Land, I'm here with Romeo. Okay. He about to tell some things. which only sold about 300,000 copies in the US. The album would be the last time Romeo would go by the name Little Romeo. After all, he wasn't so little anymore. Around the next year, he teamed up with his brother and cousins to form a group called Rich Boys. They released a collab album called Young Ballers, The Hood Been Good To Us. But unfortunately, the album only sold about 10,000 copies worldwide. The group took this as a sign and quickly disbanded afterwards. He then went on to co-found a new label with his old man titled Gutter Music. Around 2006, under the new label founded with his father, Romeo dropped two albums titled Lottery and God's Gift. God's Gift became the soundtrack for a film of the same name, produced and directed by his father, Master P. Growing up, I didn't have much, just a few bucks. His school, new sneakers, but no lunch. The album had an appreciable success, selling over 100,000 copies. God's Gift would become his first album to be classified as explicit, and he now bore the moniker Romeo. You know, I'm one of those, those people where, like I said, if I got it, you got it. Romeo then went on to start a non-explicit record label, which was titled Take A Stand Records. Around the same time, Romeo teamed up with his dad to form another group called Miller Boys. They went on to release an album called Hip Hop History. Now around 2008, Romeo began working on his fourth album and produced a single called Get Low With It with Akon and his brother Valentino Miller. Unfortunately, the song did not generate a lot of buzz and Little Romeo didn't release his fourth album. Over the next few years, Little Romeo kept releasing music and around 2011, he released his fourth album as a mixtape simply because at this point, nobody was checking for Little Romeo albums. From around 2012 to 2015, he formed a new group called Rescue 3. It's my new group, Rescue 3, uh -huh. you know, and uh, here to take over, you know, we make great music and uh, we're here for the ladies. The ladies yeah. is gonna love this group. That's all I gotta say. Let's steal some hearts. Steal some That's hearts. why it's Rescue 3. We're about to rescue these young women <laughs> in the world. And once again, the group disbanded. And that's essentially how Little Romeo's career unfolded after that. He drops a couple of singles, mixtapes, forms a group, they disband, and so on and so forth. 
Now at this point in his career, it was evident that Romeo no longer had the sweet, charming, kid-friendly image that he used to have. The same thing happened to Bow Wow. But luckily for him, he had other things going for him, like his acting career and access to his daddy's money. From around 2001, he had been acting here and there. For example, he made an appearance in the dance movie Honey, which also featured Jessica Alba and Mackay Pfeiffer. Yeah, um, yeah, me and um, Jessica Alba starring in that okay. in the movie Honey. Around 2012, he made another non-rapper appearance in Tyler Perry's film Madea's Witness Protection. In the movie, he plays Jake, a young man who is trying to get his money back from a Ponzi scheme after losing his father's church and retirement money. So yeah, Little Romeo did a lot of acting. He also began a clothing line around 2010 called College Boys, and it was promoted by the likes of Big Time Rush, Justin Bieber, and Jaden Smith. At the time of making this video, Romeo is dating Drew Sangster, and the couple share a baby daughter. He and his father have been known to be great philanthropists, extensively working towards supporting people, particularly the young people affected by natural disasters such as Hurricane Katrina. They run the P. Miller Youth Centers in New Orleans, as well as other parts of the U.S. to encourage young and underprivileged kids. Tragically, this year his sister passed away after experiencing a lot of mental health issues and abusing substances. In essence, Romeo Miller is an all-round performer who's had a roller coaster career, but all in all, he has stayed dedicated to his craft. And in my opinion, he has no reason to work ever again because his father is a master P. I'd rather fall than some because I feel like us being a family. I think that's why some people had a hard time gravitating towards his music, you know, because he had no struggle. The only reason why people know Little Romeo's name is because Master P put him on and used Bow Wow's image as something to mimic. This is nepotism at its finest, but I respect Little Romeo for actually trying to do something with his career instead of sitting on his ass and letting daddy do all the work. He could have done that, but he wanted to be something more, and that's respectable. Also, Bow Wow and Little Romeo have since made up and did it publicly during a recent versus battle. Little Romeo gets about 20,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and his most popular songs on the platform are My Baby, Play Like Us, Make You Dance, Two Way, and The Girlies. Hey, but look, Bow. What's up, dog? I told you, you couldn't do no verses without me. You definitely said And it that. wasn't about no music shit. Right. It was about history. It was Lil Romeo or Lil Bow Wow, right? And I wanted to show people we stronger together. It shouldn't have took 20 years for us to be here, but I got to tell you, Soldier Boy, the first rapper and only rapper to get Bow Wow and Romeo on the same stage. So salute, man. 20 years I later, that's, fast. that's what it's about. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Lil Romeo in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests, I'm always taking those. So give me some more. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.